Columbian Court House? Yeah. Madison right, County. Huh? Done working here. Welcome. Y'all feel free to sit wherever you like. This is just a quick little 10 minute video. We like to start for our visitors a little bit of background information over the site. And if y'all have any questions once the video is over, just feel free to ask. Okay, thank you. He was a man of the American frontier. Hard to reach. Accomplishments. Oh, it's nice, nice place, huh? Life in the White House. They're enslaved at the Pope Home. President to keep all his campaign promises. Wow, that's the wife. Hmm? Where is she now? Huh? The shoes? The wife? Yeah. Wife's shoes? Where is he? Too small. So cute, huh? Outside or working outside. You're going up the stairs? And whenever you're ready to go to the main house, I'll be glad to take y'all. Feel free to come with me and I'll lock the front door. So, 
welcome into the main house, originally constructed by the president's father. The Polk family was originally from Mecklenburg, North Carolina. Oh. That's where James K. Polk was born in 1795. His family would come here to Middle Tennessee in 1806, settling on a small farm that'd be just a few miles north of here. It's coming from his national residence that they were purchased or received after the new White House. And we do a lot of photography, we just ask for no flash and refrain from touching collection items to operation. Uh, it's one of those things I've uh, debated, but I think there's it has a lot of its original parts and they'd have to replace some of them, and it's one of those sort of debated. But they like to keep it original with that, or they like it working instead. And if you'd like to step over to the parlor, feel free to. As we come over to the parlor, it's a little bit more important to point out that we have the home designed if James and Sarah decided to move in. We don't have the home in an early Regency style. If a young back with them, they would purchase this furniture from a New York department. The painting on the left is of James K. Polk in the first year of his presidency from 1845 to 1846. He is around the age of 49, almost 50. He'd be the first U.S. president elected up to the age of 50 and the youngest elected up until that point. While the portrait on the right is of Polk again, but just less than three years later, as he's heading into the very final few months of his administration's office. They're both by the artist Healy, the official president of the portrait of the era. Polk is one of the more accomplished one-term presidents some of the wealthiest U.S. consulates throughout Africa and Asia, and as a gift, an uh, ambassador or a dignitary from the Tunisian consulate would have this table made as a gift for Polk when he was Washington. Choose this set to best represent the state of Tennessee by requesting a different Tennessee wildflower on each individual piece, as not just the plate, the coffee cup, the Earl. He was the personal, a bit uncommon for a woman. Mention you all if you'd like of going upstairs. And y'all can go in front of me. We'll just be taking the first door on the left. As we come to the first room from upstairs, it becomes a little more important as we come to what was believed the president's room. This is believed the room that young James K. Polk slept and stayed in while living within this home. He spent about six years of his adult life within this space, from his early 20s until about the age of 28. He'd be in this room not only as a local lawyer, but elected to his first term to the state legislature while still living within the home. But we have to rent on a frontier study of the era, and he's going to have to share this room with a few of his brothers. For a total of five boys within this room while Polk was staying within the home. Now, originally, when they were living with it, and this design. We come over to the room believed that the president's four sisters slept and stayed in from a period about 1816 into the early 1830s. And y'all might be going, hey, what's going on here? Why do the girls in the larger space, why do they get more windows and why do they get a fireplace? This seems a little bit unfair. It plays this may be a little bit of a surprise, but this is Sarah Polk just four to five years later when we saw her downstairs. This is by an artist named W.B. Page of 47 within it. We have Sarah, Sarah from Wash Supplies. We got the most important thing. What? The stew pot. Yes, exactly. You know, it's like, you know, the chamber pot right there. It's belonging to Sarah. You know, the matching flower of the valley is the rest of the Wash Supplies has. I didn't see that. <laughs> and if y'all like, we have a little closet we have here on the left of the hallway. The little closet, or the wall, I should say, is the only known architectural change to the home in its history we did not revert back. And before we get to our last portraits, we're going to come into the final room for upstairs. How tall is Polk supposed to be? He stood between around 5'7", five, 5'8", five, average height for a man of the era. Sarah stood between about 5'2", five, 5'3", five, average height for a woman. Hmm. Short doors. Oh, very much so. Sarah Polk holds a very distinguished title to her name, but it's one of the most depressing, as Sarah is the longest widowed first lady in American history, living over 42 years after her husband's death to her 88th year, dying in 1891, just a little bit more than a week shy of her official 80th birthday. We have a portrait of the first lady at the age of 75 by an artist named George Jury, and she just was a little bit more than 12 years of life after this portrait became. 
complete it. But Sarah would spend the main intent of wanting to preserve her husband's legacy and memory. She'd host several U.S. presidents, from Andrew Johnson to Grover Cleveland at Polk Place, including some of the more prominent figures of the 19th century, such as Sam Hughes dresser coming from Polk Place, along with the music box. And the music box is a really fun design to it. It's what's referred to as a multiple song cylinder. Encased in the still cylinder is about nine, ten different songs. And we all may ask, well, hey, what type of music do you have in operas of the 1800s? Died in 1891, with the entire nation expecting the president's rule to come to effect. The Polks were the only president. Mm -hmm. Big changes. Yeah, these are all Polk's siblings, brothers, and sisters, and some nieces as well. We have three of his brothers on the top. We have a sister and her husband, or a brother in law on the right, and another one of his sisters on the bottom right, all of her children in the middle, and another one of the president's mm -hmm. nieces. As we come up the hall, and with the three portraits, we have Sarah's family. We have Sarah's mother, Miss Elizabeth Childress. She's a fairly wealthy woman in the state of Tennessee, and she's portraying to us as the woman, and um, as viewers of her portrait, that she's using subtle characters so that she's a woman of status. If you know she, that she can read and write, showing she went through some form of basic education for one of her lifetime. We move over to Sarah's sister, um, the Susan Childress Rucker, one of Sarah's closer companions as her older sibling. We have her husband on the right, Mr. William Reed Rucker. He served as Mayor Murphy's Borough position, but also a business partner with Polk. We have to remember that James K. Polk is a slaveholder for his era. He would take claim to owning around 60 to 80 individually enslaved people. We have our final portrait for upstairs of the Spanish conquistador Fernando Cortez. Cortez is the very first European conqueror of Mexico City, conquering and holding it from the Aztecs in the 1500s, making waste to the Aztec Empire. Penalties: 90% of the deaths would be from disease alone, less than 10%. He looks they, like he looks like he's having trouble staying up straight. <laughs> One of the strange things about the portrait is, since it is a copy and there is an original still within Mexico, I like that we can make our way back downstairs and I can show all the kitchen building as the final portion of the tour. If you like, I can get the back door. If you'd like to come up and see the kitchen building as the final portion of the tour. Oh, I like the fountain. Here in early Regency America South, they're disattaching their kitchen from the main house, playing to several parts of the air. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. With disattaching the kitchen, it makes sure that extra heat doesn't come over and spread throughout the rest of the home, but it also plays a little bit of hand for the fire as well. The fireplace is also on the main house. Those are primarily used for heating, mostly through the winter. So they aren't going to be cooking out of those fireplaces. But the kitchen, on the other hand, since they're going to be cooking all year round, there's a little bit of a higher chance of fire. So if your kitchen catches on fire, it's not going to spread over and damage the rest of your home. Okay, so afterwards, if you'd like to come up to the gardens or back over to the visitor center, it's y'all's choice. But thank y'all for coming out to tour today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This home was constructed from one of the president's younger sisters. It was originally side yard to the Polk home, but just a few years after the main house was built, one of his sisters would be married, and the home would kind of be built as a makeshift wedding present for her. But she'd eventually go on to have 11 children within this home, outgrowing it, forcing her to move to a larger home up the street. It's had a lot of add ons, a lot of changes, and that's why we currently use it as our visitor's. Feel free to explore, and thank y'all again for coming on a tour. Thank you. It's representative of it. Probably plastic. Real cotton, though. Oh, wash your hands? No. <laughs> this will be on food preparation. Take it across, then they eat. They eat? They eat after the family did. Oh, they, yeah. Wow. They don't close this here. So just leave it open. Here. We got a gate on it. Mm -hmm. Spinning wheel. Huh? That's a spinning wheel. Mm -hmm. Where we? This thing would have. Uh, 
Ooh. We have a leather strap around here. Yeah. Eight o'clock now. We'll make this thing spin. Not eight o'clock. There, the time there. Yes, we collect the a spun sp cotton, the thread. Yeah. After you spun it, this we collect it. Put a churn. I'm not sure about the fire. Some kind of warmer. Roaster. Mm, and a bowl. And a bowl, a candy dish, food baskets, whiskey bottle. Mm, kitchen. So let's go out now. We don't come back there anymore. Huh? We don't come back there anymore. Ah, okay. What? What's that? Scrape the mud off your boots. Picture, picture. Picture. You have to press that one? Jay walking. Just there's your torch. Tennessee.